they're doing a, uh, it's a PBS, right? Documentary? Yeah. It's a pump television? Yeah. yeah we're <laughs> What you want to know? The women. Okay, we're going. Okay, th this is, uh, we walked up at the end, this is a PBS uh -huh. documentary on organizing violence in the South, uh -huh. and it, it, it's based on the perspective that in... They is a lot of, a lot of intimidation, they use terroristic type tactics on the employees in the mill. And uh, all I can say is, the reason why I'm back here today is because somebody's got to help us. We need help. We want some help from somebody. We got to do something because we ain't got much of a choice. And they didn't get in this time. You can expect what we're going to go through this, this after election day. We're going to have a rough time. You, you can bank on that. But, we're, but you're fighting for it. Oh, yeah, I ain't camera. giving up. Yeah, I'm not there. I'm not going to go turn around. Oh, no, I'm not being turned around. You can forget it. You can forget that. I told my brother, he's a supervisor. He says, done like this. Oh, yeah, we won. I said, it ain't over yet, son. I ain't going to be turning around this time. Right. That's the way I feel about it. Fieldcrest didn't win nothing. No. Fieldcrest lost. The main reason why I can't understand these people voting no is because when they vote against the union, they're voting against themselves. That's right. Because the union is a united group. It's the people that work in the plants that's, the fight. that's what we're fighting for. The people, I, whenever I voted yes, I voted for myself, I voted for the people wearing no shirts, and I voted for the other people. Everybody in that plant, everybody in my plant, plant one, plant seven, and all of them. Because if you can't stand up for what you believe in, there ain't no sense in standing up at all. How much courage did it take to put those buttons on and that sticker and that hat? I laid down the four way strike. I laid down a four from a high school and hollered, strike, strike. <laughs> gotta have a little sympathy. <laughs> gotta have somebody feel sorry for us. Hey, it don't take no courage. If you believe if you believe in something, it don't take no courage to put on something that you believe in. Now, like the no shirts, there's a lot of people in there that was told to wear them. There was a lot of people that was asked by foreman to wear them. There was a lot of people that was asked by departmental manager to wear them. They wouldn't even give me one. I asked for one. They wouldn't even let me have one. It was like pulling teeth just to get a no button. They wouldn't even give you no shirts after you had these on, and it was like they didn't want to talk to you. Meetings, they threw you at the meetings. They wouldn't let you do nothing. They, they wouldn't let you go to the meetings. Because you were for it. Why did they throw you out of meetings? They were for it, and you were afraid, afraid you'd speak up and tell them how you, they were lying. Because they afraid don't believe in democracy. That because they actually don't believe in democracy. I know how them people in Russia feel today fighting for their freedom over there. But sometimes I think they've got more freedom in Russia than we've got right here in Kannapolis, North Carolina. That's Thank the way you. I feel about it. I thank God for these people who stood up and said their peace and didn't back off. We proved a point. We proved all of us, maybe, I, I, let me rephrase that. We proved that all of us who are in favor of the union are in favor, in favor of our democratic rights. And we're willing to go through fear to get it. Thank God for that. And did nobody have to tell us to be nice to people? We was just raised that way to be nice That's to right. people. We're people. We, we wasn't the ones not We're nice. The un the un there's one major difference between the Union and Fieldcrest Cannon. Fieldcrest Cannon believes in Fieldcrest Cannon. The Union believes in the people that work there because it's made up of the people that work there. The Fieldcrest believes in whatever. Fieldcrest has their own set of laws and their own mm -hmm. set of rules they play by. They done proved right. that in the election. With everything they've done wrong in the election, they've done proved that they don't, they don't believe in the law. They must think they're above it or something. I always I was I'm hoarse from hard so much last night, not because we won, but because we won a point last night. We sh we showed these people last night that it, even though this state has always been dominated by those who have the wealth and the power and the strength, that there's some of us who are willing yet to stand up in the bleak of this darkness. You don't feel like you lost. Right. Amen. No, I feel like, I feel like we've made a point. We've made a point to these people. We showed these people that even though they control, we still believe in our democracy, even though they may control it. One day this great iron curtain that Phil Chris Cannon has built is going to come down, and we're going to be a free people. Thank God. Amen to that. What we are fear now when we uh, go back to work, we are going to be arrested because uh, when we were the one that wrote the button in there, they know how they were raft. They would walk by you, and then they even would raft some of them. Uh, but I had a uh, foreman to tell me out there, no, a head fixer to tell me, say, Mamie, why are you wearing those buttons? Say, you getting ready to retire. Why are you wearing? 
I said, well, well, you, I said, you wear your button, and I got a right to wear mine. This is the way I feel. He said, well, since you got to retire, you should vote no for the union. So you should vote for the mayor. And I said, oh, well, that's your opinion. I have my opinion. But what I'm afraid of, now, when we go back to work, the one that, uh, they know everybody that will vote but, and we're going to have a hard time when we go in that meal. They is going to be on our back, and they're going to be harassing us. You know, because they feel like they won, and they feel like... Film glue. You know, yeah, yeah. Film glue. Rub it in. My brother come that, home. They, Boy, I know that, all about it. They got so... The one that was wearing but, they would walk <laughs> over there in the morning. Now, my supervisor used to... Every time I meet him on the floor in the morning, he be checking out the people. He would speak to me. The last week of this campaign, when that, he would walk by, and when he got near me, he would turn his head, keep from speaking to him. Retirement. Yeah. Yeah, vote no for the retirement so they can cut you from $36 a month down to $12 a month. Vote no for it. For the mayor. Yeah, for the mayor. Yeah, the mayor. They, they wanted me to vote for the mayor because you got me, you fit to retire. It won't do you no good. I have but I told you. him that it would, I would done it to help my co worker that. And I said, I don't want they have to go through what I went through because I've been here 23 years and I was here. Uh, that this is the third time the union tried to get in since I've been here. I, and I talk to my employee every day, to my co-worker every day, and tell them, well, y'all just should go ahead and vote. I said, because this union don't get in. I told them, I said, y'all will have a hard time. I said, not me. I said, because I can go home. I have already made my little social security. I said, but I'm doing this to help y'all. I don't know whether they appreciate it or no, but that's that's why I'm fighting for it. And I'm not going to retire. I was going to retire, but I'm not going to retire no time soon. What is the difference so between this election that you see in this election? That, that it was, oh, it was a lot better. It was, it was a lot, lot better. better. Why do you think it was better? Well, well people, uh, they, they, they uh, voted more for it because the, the other two elections, they really did scare the people. The other two were nothing. Uh, this one right here was more important because uh -huh. we had a chance to challenge them secretaries and EI people and like mm -hmm. people take place of being a supervisor. We challenged it. So last time they just went on through. Yeah. Right. See, they didn't care. Well, they, they don't care. Well, do y'all feel like you lost anything? No, no, no. no, no. Oh. We're proud. No, we are I'm proud, proud of myself. Right. And we're not through yet. No, I like to see. I like to have another we? election. Excuse me, just a minute. Yeah. I like to have another election. Just see them sweat. Yeah, they can't put nothing on me because they put it all on me. And I stood up to everything they could. I just looked at them. Yeah, you know, I think, I think like I'm crazy. Think I'm crazy? Oh yeah, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. Vote yes. Vote yes. That's all you yeah. gotta do. Is vote yes. It'd be all over. What with. does yes mean? Yes means yes to freedom. Yes to having to say. Yes to getting them off your back. Yeah, yeah, you got to stand up to them. If you don't stand up to them, they'll run right over you. They'll treat you like you ain't nothing, like a trash, a dog. A dog is treated better than I am. A dog. My brother. You more respect by saying yes. You think y'all sent them a strong message? Yeah. Yeah, we sent all our messages to them. We waking up. You stood Nobody up to him, didn't no more. Yeah, right. I was raised here, we had to suck it up. I, we know we're tired, tired of sucking it up. We didn't suck it up, that's how we wiped it up. We're tired of sucking it. Yep, I think, I think it's a shame that, 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 the, uh, that the labor board and all these people who have the right to help the people in the state of North Carolina will set back and allow a company like this to use this type of fear, intimidation, and coercion to scare its workers out of their democratic rights. This, well, this bothers me because I've that. worked all these years. I've been Ken Can and Mill for close to 30 years. And I've paid a lot of taxes. I'm paying these people salaries, but they're not working for me. They're working for these boys. You know why they're I, working for them? Because they're paying a little bit more. Feel, I'm not, let me tell you something. I've never been worried. I've never been worried about the salaries, really, that we pay across the table. To me, it's what goes under the table yeah. that I've always worried about. You know? Who you mean under the table, too? Under the table, pay. Like under the table, table, pay, table. You, know, yeah. you know, it's not always the, you know, when you go. it's not always everybody that, I'm not saying everybody's no, taking bribes. I don't mean everybody's yeah. taking bribes. But but the option is there. And when you see the labor laws, the way they're written, I, I, I've checked in on labor laws. And I found out in the state of North Carolina, and people in, people in County Mill don't really know this, we don't really have many working rights in this state. You can take you can take a boss man. Now, listen, you can take a boss man that's got... A sweetheart out on the, out on the floor. Right. If yeah. these two women are of the same race, 
he can he can mistreat that woman over his sweetheart. And the law says, yeah, and there's nothing you can do about it. But there is. You have a union, it won't go. There's a lot of favoritism in the plan. Oh, oh yeah. 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 I've been there since yeah. I've been there before, yeah. since before yeah. 1974. Yeah. Yeah. And I tell like you, that. one person oh, get away with this. Oh, 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 how do you think the union will change the favoritism? I think it will stop it. I think it will stop it completely. Because when the people have a chance to stand up and speak for themselves, you know, they're not going to go for junk like that. That's done by individuals. Right. So you don't have a chance to speak for yourself. They say you already speak you for yourself. You need to speak for yourself. You don't make no decisions. The company does whatever they right. want yeah. to do. I look forward to the day when we can walk where the just shall walk. When we can stand where no one stands alone. Yeah. We can fight this thing and win this and win this fight, see? Right. For the sake of the least of the least, that we won't dare falter. That's, right. That's the way I feel about it. We, yeah. So we, as we soon as the lady behind moves out, so we can't talk about the religion. I thank God for people that would stand up for religion and righteous as Christ stood for the redemptions of lost sinner men and women when he went to Calvary Cross and gave his life for the freedom of righteousness, for the freedom of liberty as we have today. I feel that it's just as bad for man to die hungry as it is to die in sin. And we find this company has certainly robbed retirees of their retired money and still robbing people from their hard-earned wages by stretching out the jobs and reducing the speed of the hank clocks on the machine. I thank God that there's a few people that's willing to join the union that says it's a shame that man has to work on Sunday to survive, to feed his family. Friends, the Bible teaches us that God created heaven and earth in six days and on the seventh day he rested and looked over what he had accomplished and blessed it. Why can't Phil Chris Cannon look over what they've done six days and bless it as God blessed in the days he created heaven and earth. I work in washcloth department. We got a pamphlet 20 minutes before vote time telling us the little 23rd poem that went around was mocked that the union had no respect for my religion whatsoever. I'm a widow with two children. There's no one to carry them to church with me on Sundays. I have to work seven days a week sometimes for Bill Cress's respect for my religion. Is it any different? You know, I did have a choice here. I do have no choice with Bill Cress Cannon. I am told be here or else. Good. Thank you very much. Come by. about your father now. Yeah, well, he's worked in the mill up at China Grove Cotton Mill all his life, and that's all he knows. So then when he turned around and asked to step down, he had a heart condition. He couldn't take it anymore as a supervisor. So he asked to step down, and the company told him there was no stepping down. You could only step out. You do as the company says, or there are no jobs. Now, you were going to tell me about uh, the 12-hour days. I thought that was something we won in 1980. Talk about the 12-hour days. Well, see, I work 12 hours at night. I personally like 12 hours at night. There's a lot of people up there that don't like the 12 hours. They only like the 8-hour shifts. I like the 12 hours because it gives more time off. But on the 12-hour shifts, you work harder. There's longer hours. You don't get as many breaks. And how, how, yeah. does, it, how does it affect the, the women with the young children? Well, it does make it hard when I have. I've raised my kids single. My baby's 14 for the, uh, up to the last three years as a single mother. And... Uh, the, I guess the daytime shift will make it easier, but night times, so you, you already can't find people to babysit for night times. But 12 hour shifts, it, it costs so much for a babysitter if you can find a babysitter. Most of the nurseries operate on an 8 hour shift, not a 12 hour shift. So it runs into more time with that. Uh, what little bit of time you have off, like if you work Monday and Tuesday, you have Wednesday and Thursday off. But when you come in on Wednesday morning, you've got to sleep. In order to make it time, you get up in the afternoons. You know, it's time for everybody else to be going to bed. 
So really you only have Thursday off and you've got so much stuff behind housework and stuff to get done, bills and all to get done. You run up down the road in time. That's all done. It's time to go back in there and work again. There is really no time off on 12 hour shifts. How long have you worked? Tell us about how long you worked there. Well, I work at Plant 7 up in Salisbury. I've only been there about a year. I've worked at that Plant 16, Plant 4 before, uh, which I wouldn't. Uh, plant 7 is one of the easier meals to work for because my supervisor is a little bit easier than some of them. But I was out one time under medical care, under a doctor. They refused to give me a leave and terminated me. They told me, you know, I don't have any rights. I am one person, unless we unite and stand together, there is no rights. You were saying about that you had other choices. Yeah, that's what we're standing here now. Phil Chris Cannon thinks they've got us beat, but they don't. Because even if the, the most they could do would be to fire me. If they fire me, you know, they're not the only meal around here. They're not the only people here. There are other jobs and other places to go. And that's what the people's going to have to understand. If they back down now and let them have it, they're going to be treated worse. There's going to be cutbacks in the jobs. They're not going to get any raises. They've been promising everything. But when this is all over, if it don't go through, it's going to be worse than what it was. Yeah. It's not going to get anything. They're going to have to stand up for the rights and stand up for what they want. It's the only way they're going to get it. Great. Can you all talk about what, I know you've worked hard for the last nine weeks. I think we're right. talking about this 12-hour shift business. We're tomorrow. talking about the 12 I'm on 12 hours in the weed room at Plant 7 in Salisbury. Our department manager said if he has to put a relief pan on our job so we could take a break, I'm a weaver. He has to cut our pay. And he also said, if our job runs good, we can take a break. Come if on. our job runs bad, we have to work that much harder if we want to take a break. And it's not fair. Production on 12 hours, if your job's not running, I've come out of there working 12 hours straight with time enough for me to go to the bathroom. And that's not fair. Did your folks uh, grow up in, in the mill? Sir? Did your folks go, grow up in the mill? Do you come from a mill family? Uh, no. Uh -huh. Did any I've of your... been there 13 and a half years. Yeah. Do any of your folks yeah. come from mill families? Tell about yes. your, the way you look at it, the way your, your folks looked at it. Okay, my father is out of the mill now. He's 72 years old. And he worked 38 years for Cannon Mills as a, a card hand, slubber tender. And when he got, he had rheumatoid arthritis. When he got to the point at 57 to where he could no longer run slubbers, he was told they no longer needed him. So they sent him out the door. Too, too young to retire and too old to start all over again. When there were jobs in there that he could have did, that they could have gave him that was a lot easier, and with the seniority that he had, he should have had. Instead of that, they said, no, you can't run slubbers. We don't need you. You hit the door. So he had to go out and do the best he could. He filed for disability, and by luck, he got it at 57. And uh, I've been in the mill, this and not this one, but plant 16 for 20 years as a weaver. And I can vouch with this lady over here that the 12-hour shifts are hard, no breaks. You eat your lunch on your, while your job's running. If you take a break, you come back with your job tore up and you're losing money. We don't get no, we get time and a half on two hours for, to work the whole 84 hours that they pay. And then they cut you, if they're going to stop off, they stop off on Saturdays so they don't have to pay you no time and a half. Make you come in and work one day on Sunday and then be off on Monday and Tuesday. Have your, your job been stretched out? Yeah. <laughs> in the last 20 years. Oh, yes. Uh, the jobs have stretched out in the last 20 years, and the pay rate is uh, not much better than what it was when I first started. And the way they do it is that a weaver is never on one Pacific set of looms uh, in the plant that I work in. The IE comes in at least every two weeks and rotates the weavers. When they get to where they can handle the job, could you start that again and explain what an IE is? Because my audience is not going to know what the okay. hell that means. An IE is an industrial engineer who comes in and they set the rates for the looms. They come in and evaluate how many times they stop and they go by that whether or not how much that loom's going to pay. And uh, when they do that, if your job is running real bad, the points either go up 
and production will come down. But when your job runs real good, when you can make the money, they'll come in and up to lower the points on the looms, give you more looms to run, and up your production rate, and that way you're not making any more money. So it doesn't pay to have a good running job. It pays to have the worst running thing in there because that's the person going to make the money. It used to be, if your job run good, you rolled the cloth off of there, you made the money. Now that's not the case. You're rolling more cloth off with less money and less pay. That's where the pay cut comes. How do you feel when those fellas are following you around? Oh, it, it's like it's like you have a shadow, you know, and and you stand there, you're trying to do your job, and they're right over top of you, watching every little move you make, how you tie that in, pull that in, and start that loom up, and they're writing it down on a little computer, and every time you're they going to do that, your job is running real, real good. They don't do it when your job runs bad, because if they do, they know they got to up them points, lower your production to where you can make some money off of it. They wait till that job runs good, and when they come in and check you, that they go back, they file it. When it comes out the next week, your pay is cut. You're picking up more looms for less money. Who are those guys? The industrial engineers, the frequency checkers, they call them. Are they the same people year after year? Yeah, yeah, it's the same people. They have a little department in there they call industrial engineering. And they, they, have, they hire people to come in there and they pay them to come out there to cut your pay. Do they have any women involved in that? Women, men, it's, uh, blacks, whites, it's, it's, it's all different. The, the thing about industrial engineers is they tell you they're not checking you, they're checking your machines. Right. And if they're not, che if they're not, if they're checking my machines, they're right on my back the whole time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're gonna check my machines, you don't need me there. If, if it's, like Dee Dee says, if the jobs are running good, don't look for them to, I mean bad, don't look for them to come. I've had mine hanging in the floor. I work in a spinning room. And if you're in the spinning but, room and you're, and you're in a hurry and going and you get a far ahead of them, you got to stop, let them catch up yeah, with you. Yeah. you got to wait on them and get balled up and in a mess because they slow. That's right. That's right. I hit my loom, my arm on one of my looms last week, and I had a knot to come up on it. I told my supervisor, and he said, well, how would you do that? And I showed him. What it happened, I said, rushing around these lungs so much. He said, well, don't rush. You need to slow down. I said, they're running so bad. There's no humidity down here. They won't run. They run the, we run on outside air to save the company money. The we run will not run on outside air. We have to have humidity in there in order for those lungs to run. Now, when uh, Fitzgibbons or some big person or people oh, yeah. from Plant run One good. come up there checking our cloth, those limbs run like a top. Run good. When yeah, they leave, they, they start stopping off, left yeah. and right. Shoot, dig it to where you got the roving in there to hang in the spin room. You got trash and stuff all over it because they've waited with it. I had a guy got stuff in my eye from it the other night. They didn't want to send me to the medical department. Want me to wear a patch on my eye for 12 hours, and it would be okay because they didn't want to take the time or the money to send me to an eye doctor. Yeah. And now it has cut my eye up, my eye's infected, and they don't want to pay for it. Then they they but, they just yeah, want to yeah the doctor to... told me that I might have cut my eye. He couldn't tell, but because I had my buttons on, he was more in, uh -huh. interested in, in talking union than he was my eye. He told me I had a contagious disease, yes, Lord, that it, we were spreading yes, it around yes, the mill up here, and that was what was wrong with me, and that what I needed to do was to stay away from everybody and leave them alone, and I'd get better. But you know what that contagious disease is? It's union! When you want to be in a union, yep. you want to be able to take care of this lady right here. Right. She's on a 12-hour shift. That's right. I want her job to be just as well as mine. I work an eight-hour shift. And when I listen to these women talk, I feel like I'm lazy because all I do is eight hours. But my eight hours entails doing my job doing a job that someone else was hired to do two or three years ago, they figure my machine can handle that extra job and I can handle it too. So they take that person out from two or three years ago. Yep. I'm doing that person's job, my job, and I'm only getting paid $6.62 an hour. That six sixty two is supposed to take care of my children, my babysitter, my rent, my car payment, my utilities, my groceries, and it's supposed to put clothes on my kids' backs, books in their hands for school, and these women out here on 12-hour shifts, they got to get that same $6.62 when the company feels like, well, you can make it on less than that. They take it. They don't ask you. 
You don't have no input on what happens on your job, mm -hmm. what type of machine you run, how many machines you run, how long you run them. That union, this union here is from the support of all these people. These mm -hmm. people from inside the plant, plant one, plant 10, plant which is closed. And it was not closed because it was union. It was closed for economic reasons. We had plant two long ago. It was outdated. So they tore it down. <coughs> they take plants in Fieldale. They invest millions of dollars in new machinery, but they can't invest in us. They can't give us the money we deserve to be getting paid. That's why we're out here fighting for each other, because we want to see each other be able to ride in a decent riding car, to be able to eat a decent meal when we sit down. And whenever we look at each other, we want to feel that be, we are somebody, and not just because we're labor. That's we it. are somebody. We are important. Without us, those meals would not run, because these our supervisors can't even do their job, let alone do our job. They come to me and ask me what's on the floor for us to do, and they're the supervisors. And if I wanted to, I could stand there and laugh and say, oh, there's nothing on the floor, because usually there's nothing but junk, and you're not going to make any money on it. But when you tell them the truth, you say, okay, we can do this, we can do that, we can do that. The worst work in there, they want you to do the most of it. And when they see you can make money, that's when the industrial engineers walk in. They say, oh, you're doing an excellent job. You can get nine, out of nine hours on an eight-hour shift. But they don't tell, you don't tell them you only get a 15-minute dinner break. You don't tell them you don't go to the bathroom twice a night. You don't, if you're lucky, you don't tell them that you have to sit in here and deal with brown lung from a card room that comes out of this meal. You get carpal tunnel disease from sewing because you do the same motion over and over and your hands are destroyed. When you tell them you're having these problems, you didn't get it here, you got it outside. And you got it right there in that meal because that's all you had to do. You had to work to make a living. And if it wasn't for the love of the people inside of this union hall, who come from other plants, who come from all over this nation. They come from everywhere. They give up their families. They give up their homes. They give up their cars. They give up their decent meals and eat out every night, every meal here. You know you don't want to take out food every time you sit down. These people are giving up everything they got. They don't get paid their working wage because they're here to help us. They get paid what our other union brothers and sisters are given so that we can have a decent life. And that's what it's all about. If it be contagious, let it spread all over this yes. country. Yes. Yes. All of this stuff has been stirred up by Yankees and outsiders. It's not uh, Well, I'm not a Yankee. I'm a rebel. <laughs> hey, it's like this. Right if here. you want to know what a Yankee is, I'm married to one. He's from Minnesota. And when I worked up there, I got treated better when I was a cashier and a bagging person than I do when I walk in that mill and do a skilled job. Right. These jobs inside these mills require skill. That you don't want, you couldn't walk in off the job, off the street and do the job that I do. These men around here looking around and all these people that say the union is bad for us, they couldn't walk in and do the jobs we do. We do the best quality towel can and ever put out. We do the best quality sheet in America. And when we go to Belks, Penny, Sears, our towels are sitting out there on the floor, awesome. and they're the we best made towel right. in the place, yeah. and we can't even can't afford, afford to buy them right. because we don't get paid right. the money right. that we make. Yeah. 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 Some, and then when they have some of the ones that they didn't know to start with, it's just like a girl I work with up at Plant 7. She's right up to the boss man. Just like he is hired the same day, but she's so close, she'd do anything he tells her to. Why well, should I vote yes, she said. I get to do anything I want to. I got my way. I don't have to run my job. She goes in, the job's running bad. I don't want to run it tonight. Put the spare girl on to run it or somebody else, and I walk around and do nothing all night. Yeah. Now, why should she about union? Because we want the same things. We want to be treated right. That's right. She's got it already. That's right. you know, there's two different policies in that meal. Yeah, For those that want it right and those that want to kiss up to the boss man. That's it. Yeah. Yeah.